What's going on, everybody? Bobby Fad and the man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We're doing a very early look for tonight's NBA slate. I am back in California, so I will have my early builds as well as my core plays and my bets of the day and everything posted on the site a little bit later. Uh, curious to to know how it's been going, Sheet. How'd you do last night? Anything anything good? I know it was a weird little four gamer, but no, not really. I didn't feel I didn't really feel so well last night, so I crashed a little early. So I didn't. Sorry. I, I was I was um I was. Uh, not really catching for anything. And I guess some of the later games got there for me. So I broke about even, um, yeah. but not, not, uh, nothing, uh, nothing major. I mean, just, uh, uh, well, you know, we'll, moving on to a, to a bigger slate with a lot more options. Yep. Uh, really, really difficult. <laughs> yep. And for Friday night as well, we'll see what happens. And we're going to try to make the big slate small. And remember earlier today, I just want to give a heads up for all of the NBA content in general. The earlier in the day, the less we're going to be able to, to to really nail down the value because we just don't know who's going to be playing or not later in the day. And that seems to be what happens every day. Something will open up, especially on these large slates. So some of the early value that we talk about may not be as good a value later in the day. And some of the uh, but but that's why I want to focus more on the the top guys, the top guys we want to spend on. Um I, I'm sort of I'm sort of bummed a little bit I didn't play yesterday because I would have done everything I could to, to I think to squeeze Luca into my lineup. So and like the game going into overtime and he scored what seven million fantasy points. So that would have been that would have been nice. Um, eighty plus, right? Yeah. yeah, they get eighty four or something like that. Um, but anyway, yeah, let's get into it. Let's start off with uh, you know, again, I, I think that you know the, the the rules for these big slates are we want to we want to try to make them small and we want to in general try to delay, delay, delay if there's any question marks and even if there aren't because things tend to happen. Uh, that we aren't ready to expect. So let's uh, let's start off with Charlotte and Orlando. Uh, this is a I'm sorry, sorry. Is that yes. Yes, Orlando you have right? No, I was going to say. I mean, overall the slate looks like a big old freaking barbell. I mean, the two the two main source of value is in the first game and the last game. So it's yep. going to be interesting to see how to how to deal with that, especially considering you want to push things off as late as possible. But it's just hard to ignore this this first game. You know, you have mm -hmm. you have Cole Anthony out. Um, uh, and, and so these guys are going to be popping. So we have to kind of deal with this. Like I, I have, I have France, uh, France Wagner again, right. As, as a, as a really, really good value here. I also am getting Wendell Carter jr. As well. And um, who else? I mean, Banchero at 7,800. I mean, he could take this opportunity to put a big usage to usage game together uh, also. So I think all three of these guys look really good. And then you also have, uh, what's his name remaining out uh, Terry Rozier. So these Charlotte guys, you, know, you can go right back to Dennis Smith jr. If you want, um, you could go to Gordon Hayward. If you want, you can go to even Mason Plumlee's so, sort of cheap at 5k uh, and Ubre at 6,200. I think right off the bat, you have a game that listen, if you want to just, if, if you, if you want to like go out to dinner, right. And don't feel like dealing with the with Portland and like all that other stuff later. And just this, you know, just play one or two Portland's and then just, just jam this, the Charlotte Orlando game to get your day going. I, I think, I think you could do worse. I agree. Um, the thing I have an issue with, with it, it's really hard to peg this Charlotte team for me in general. Um, and, and even the other night, you know, we talked about book night and I looked up at halftime and he had like 20 fantasy points and then ended up doing absolutely nothing. I believe after that, um, I, I am really struggling with the Charlotte, what I want to do. So I'm, I'm sort of more inclined to fade it. I think Dennis Smith jr. Is fine. I think that Hayward is fine. Plumlee is Plumlee. And, and the, the reason I, I kind of like Plumlee tonight, I don't usually like to play him because you, you sort of always get this, this wide range of minutes and they'll use Washington at the five, but because Orlando has so many bigs and they're always going to have a guy who's, you know, Wendell Carter jr. Even Ben Caro is a monster of a, of a, you know, in terms of size, but with Bull Bull and Mo Bamba is going to get some minutes off. The, I mean, just there's just some huge guys out there. So I, I, I would think Plumlee would be a little bit of a better play today than he usually would be. It just never quite feels right on a big slate to play him for me. But I, I do think that it, you know, I, I'm definitely a little bit more onto the uh, the Portland side myself. I'm sorry, I'm on the, excuse me, the Orlando side myself. Um, and Plumlee is even just sort of a side piece for me. I, the thing with Hayward is that he can get there, but he really has to have like a really efficient game to, to, to get there and, he, and what he could. Um, but I, you know, it's just, I don't know. I don't, I'm not finding myself at these prices, all that drawn towards Charlotte. I do like the Orlando guys. I think that, uh, both Carter and Wagner, I think you're, you want to try to play one of those guys. It's an expensive price for Ben Caro, but it's not like he hasn't earned it. The thing that's a little bit tricky here for me is, uh, do, do we really, I, I don't think that the Kevin Harris, I don't think those kind of plays are optimal in the long run. He's 3K. 
They're not going to run any of the offense through him. He played 22 minutes in his last game, put up four fantasy points. Could he could he get there just by being on the court? Of course, you know, he could. It just feels like a kind of the wrong idea for me personally. And and he's actually not even looking like I don't know why he's not projecting. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he's projecting. He's projecting. Are you talking yeah. about uh, Kevon Harris, he's he should start it started oh, okay. sort of sort of point guard. Really, it's Wagner who's the point guard. But uh, I think Wagner okay. and Carter are, are they're going to run the offense through those guys uh, combined with with Van Caro, um, with with no Suggs, with no uh, what's his name, uh, with no uh, Cole Anthony. I, I, I do think that most of the offense goes through them. So I, I definitely have one of Carter or Wagner as a priority. I, I'm going to probably lean a little bit more towards Wagner. But I definitely like both of them. Uh, maybe on Fanduel, I would lean a little more Carter's way. He's a little cheaper over there. But uh, this is definitely a game that you could stack. And I, uh, I personally would 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 prefer waiting a little bit. But you know, it's 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 Charlotte. I think it's a bigger boost for Orlando than it is for for Charlotte because Orlando plays a little bit slower. Um, but yeah, I do have Carter. Um, I do have Wagner and Carter as as priorities. And and I want to just throw out a, a weird one for for very large field stuff would be Bull Bull. Um, they use this guy, like, it's weird. They use him like as a point center sometimes. Like it's, it's very, he's a very strange game. I don't really understand why he's not a better basketball player. <laughs> um, you know, there was a couple of years ago, this guy was supposed to be the number one, the, the future number one pick and all this stuff. And he has really good handling skills. Um, he's an excellent, you know, or excellent shot blocker. I just, I, I think it's, I think it's a, you're really reaching with that play, but it's just something that for, for, you know, if you're playing the lottery and you're playing 150 lineups, I would have him in a couple of those 150. So that's all I really wanted to touch on, but it is a game that I think you want to try to get right because um, it's, you know, it, it there, there's a lot of opportunity there in a game. that's a great pace matchup for, uh, for Orlando, especially. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to play a, a sliver of the bowl bowl. Ooh. Uh, um, I'm gonna have to since you put it out in the universe, only because, uh, only because he's another guy I worked out with once. He came he came to actually our gym once. Uh, I don't even know why, but he was like in New York and he came came to a workout. So I have to had to really? have a chance to meet him like a long time ago, like when he was you know, I, I guess uh, God knows how old he actually is. So who the hell knows? How old he is. <laughs> Seriously, but he was he was at the gym. So uh, so I, I gotta I got I gotta I gotta I gotta throw. Few percentile out there on him if you like. I like him. it. Yeah, just 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 a little bit. I think. I think it's just worth it. You know, he could put up. He, he could. I mean, he can get there in a hurry. That's one thing. He's got. He has. He, yeah. he he's very productive per minute. So, if he gets any extra time, it's definitely worth looking at. All right, uh, moving over to uh, the next one. You have we have uh, Atlanta, Detroit. Um, real quickly, I, I do think that you know we're supposed to we're supposed to have no. Well, Jaden Ivey's questionable. So if if Jaden Ivey is announced out, we'll know before lock. Um, I assume he'll play, but if he doesn't, I don't mind the idea of going right back to Cade. Um, we got one of the big, you know, a nice Cade game against the same team the other day. He took 25 shots. As I, as I sort of said, without, without Ivy there, he just, the usage goes through the roof for him. So I, uh, I, Cunningham only if Ivy's out and I think he actually would be a really solid play. And then I have nothing from Atlanta. How about you? Well, let's see what happened in this last game. Um, these guys just played. Um, it's about a two thirty. I, I guess they were right around the total, I suppose. Um, yeah. And uh, I was worried about playing Cade against uh, Dejounte Murray defense, and he had a very, very nice game actually. Yeah. Um, he put up forty eight. Um, like I said, always got to do is I was gonna say always got to do is even shoot mar marginally decent, and he'll get there. Yep. He really didn't even shoot well at all. Right. <laughs> He was 11 for 25, but these peripheral numbers are just so, so big, you know, mm -hmm. and, and um, despite having seven turnovers, I mean. Uh, and, and apparently I think, I think he had something like, like, like he had half of his assist. What I, I heard this on a podcast, I think it was like half of his, his ex expected assist total. So he should have actually had 12 really? on their numbers um, just because they missed so many shots. So uh, I, I, I mean, that, that 48 could have been a 60 pretty easily. Yeah, so I, I would I would take a, a, a shot. I mean, projections be damned. I mean, he's not really projecting all that great, but but I know he has a ceiling, and uh, that's what you're looking for in, in GPPs. So I, I would throw him in there. As far as the numbers go, I don't really get in too much of this game. Um, so I, I guess I'll just pass with the exception of, of, of possibly just playing K just because. Yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. And, and look, uh, everybody who always comes in every day says, Trey Young or DeJounte, we get it every question every day. The answer is usually neither. It's, it's just going to be neither. Just for me, both, it's price. Yeah. 
Um, even though, look, can, can Trey put up 60? Sure. But there's a million other guys in the slate I'd rather play, I think. Um, all you know, right. You know what you're supposed to do? What's that? You know what you're supposed to do with Atlanta? This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to wait until DeJounte Murray's out and then fade Trey as chalk. That's that's what you're actually supposed to do. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I think you're supposed to even take it a step further, possibly, and play like a John Collins or somebody else who could have a lot of the offensive firepower on the team right. or something like that. Right. Um, yeah, I totally agree. I agree completely with that. Um, all right. Uh, Cleveland-Boston feels like a game that I don't particularly want to get heavily involved in. It's not a good pace game. The guy who, again, is going to show up projection-wise, and we haven't really seen the the fantasy production, although Cleveland's playing well, he's doing his job. He's a really good real-life basketball player, but we aren't getting the numbers there. I think you're supposed to wait for Jared Allen to be out, I guess. Or I, actually, maybe you're supposed to fade him when even Jared Allen's out at some point. But uh, I think well, you, actually, mean, you mean Mobley, right? Mobley, yeah. It's the one guy who I who I always yeah. sort of come back to. I don't think I want to play any Dean Wade, even at 3,900, although we've seen him get there before. Um, I have no problem with anybody. I mean, you're going to get some, you know, I don't know. I, I no problem with these Atlanta, with the, with the Boston guys. It just feels like you're a little bit guessing and, and it's not a good matchup to be guessing. So I, I personally am kind of off of this one for, for fantasy purposes. It's probably a really good life, real life. This, this could be an Eastern conference finals matchup. I really believe that. Um, but I don't think I want anything to do with it for, for DFS. No, no, nothing wrong with taking a shot on Donovan Mitchell, who just consistently is, you know, putting up huge games. He had a terrible game the other night because he was shot five of 19, but he's put up 50 in every other game, 50 or more in every other game of the season. I, I, this is a, this is a, a no go for me. How about you? Yeah. I mean, we, we talk about big slates like this, trying to make it, make it small. And this is a, this is a perfect game to do that. You know, I, I, I would, I, I'll just, I'll just avoid it. You know, if I, if I get to some of it in crunches and scripts and stuff, maybe it may, I mean, I won't fight it, but, there's 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 really no reason to play this game on, on a hundred game slate with 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 all kinds of value stacks and other types of games as well you know uh, mm-hmm. so I'm pro- I'm probably just gonna avoid it yeah I hear you um okay uh, next we have uh, Philadelphia Toronto and uh, you know our, our boy Max your your boy the guy you don't like to play Maxi he boy he went off the other night huh <laughs> he he put up what did he put up fifty eight I think um. Yeah, I still think that for his upside, he may actually be too cheap, but I don't know that I want to do it on this slate. Uh, he would be my favorite play as of right now. Either, either he or Harden. Um, no, no issues with Embiid either at 10K. It actually is weird to see Embiid only at 10K. That might actually be something. Actually, you know what? Maybe I will put Embiid on my list just as a guy who I might consider. Um, and another guy, you know, sort of all these darlings that, that, that everybody wants to play and always project really well early on, haven't really done that fantasy, done that well fantasy wise, but they're always right there. It's Scotty Barnes. It's fine. It's fine to play him for me. Um, I think that Siakam completely fine with that, but I, I just don't think I need to play these guys on this giant of a slate, but there's nothing wrong with it. Right. That's, that's sort of where I'm at. I'm just sort of like me on everybody on, on Toronto and, and, and Philadelphia for the yeah. moment. I mean, same same thing. I mean, as as the previous game, and same thing. And piggybacking off what you said, Embiid looks okay at 10K. Um, uh, I, I got no problem with that. Um, do, do you want to play him at 10K, and then, for example, have? I mean, that's not, not exactly the same position, but do you want to play Embiid at 10K, and then an hour and an hour later, heard that hear that like Anthony Davis is out or something, you know? Right. Um, it's it's just kind of tough, um, and you know he'll be low owned. Even at 10k, I think he's not going to get more than 10 percent ownership. Um, but we'll see. Um, but again, I don't really like too much of this game. I, I agree with your other one. Siakam looks okay. Um, center position is a tough place to take a stand. There's other centers that we will talk about. Nurkic later. I mean, how do you not like him with Lillard out? I mean, so I don't know. Uh, Embiid, Siakam, pass. You know, another kind of game that I'd love to just not play. Yep. Uh pretty much the same page here. Um uh one 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 in 150, I would throw in uh one D'Anthony Melton lineup. That's the only weird one I would I have. But again, Ooh, there you go. Of, that's something. It's one out of 150. Yeah, I don't think I want to make it a priority of any kind. I do think that you're gonna see more and more Melton with this team as they try to figure themselves out and the season progresses. Um they're 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 literally Harden and, and Embiid are, are are statistically the two slowest moving players in the NBA right now. 
at any position. Um, so, so they want to get more speed on the court. And I think Melton is going to be a big part of that. I don't know if this is the right slate. If it was a four gamer, I'd be saying, Hey, we got to play the hell, the ton of this Anthony, the Anthony Melton, but it's a, it's a big slate. We don't need to do that. I don't think yet, but one in 150. Sure. All right. Um, what do you got? Why don't you start off the Indiana Washington game? Cause I, I this should be a, a game with a lot of fantasy points scored. I don't know exactly where they're going to go, but there is a, there should be some fantasy points here. I just, I having a hard time figuring out if I really want to get involved in it. How about you? Well, this was the opening game of the season. Um, and I, and I, and I watched this game kind of with intent. That was the game where uh, Turner was ruled out at the last minute. And so everybody, everybody, whatever we played Jalen Smith and Turner and not Turner and Ter Terry Taylor. And that's where we got to see uh, the, the, the Matherin for the first time, you know, so I, I got a chance to watch that game. Um, and despite the fact that it didn't score that many points, it was played at a high pace, you know, and, and there were fantasy points generated in that game. Um, so I imagine that there should be fantasy points generated in this game as well. So um, I regard Halliburton as kind of a similar play to Cade. I mean, he doesn't really project all that great tonight, but I just know he's got a ceiling. He's going to have the ball in his hands as much as he wants. So um, I think guys like that are just guys you want to have to just kind of keep playing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I don't know. I, where, where is, um, where is uh, Matherin now? 6,100? Yeah. I mean, Sure. I mean, I'll try it. I mean, last time, last time these guys played, he played 28 minutes, 34 fantasy points, 34 might not be enough, but, but, but he's got a 40, he's got a 35. I mean, he, he can do it. I, I kind of like this actually. And I'm looking at my, my board and I don't see him at all. So I like that. So, if that makes yeah. sense. so, so I like him. Um, I like Halliburton, Washington. Um, do I really want to play Monty Morris? I mean, that's like the top, you know, point per dollar play I have over there. Do I, do I really want to play Bradley Beal? Um, I don't know. It's a tough, it's tough. I think I want to play somebody, but, but I'm going to start in the Indiana. So I, will, I will say that I will recommend Halliburton and I'll recommend the, uh, the Matherin. Yeah. I like Halliburton in this matchup. I just think again, a guy, the guy's, the guy's just a, again, he's, he's probably never going to kill you and he has massive upside. He's just always at 40, yeah. even when they get blown out. And then he gets the 50, 50 plus. So every time the game is even reasonably close. So I I'm totally, totally fine with Halliburton. Um, I, I do worry. I, I, I don't like the, I think, I feel like Washington has a good chance to actually kill them in this game. Like really beat the hell out of them. My favorite play in the game is going to be again, uh, Jalen Smith. Uh, they're not quite giving him, they're sort of weird with their minutes. Everybody's playing under 30 minutes. Miles Turner only played 24 minutes the other night. This is a matchup on opening night. Remember that on FanDuel, Miles Turner was projected to be like 40% owned on a 13-game slate on the on the first Wednesday of the yeah. season. And you're going to get Miles Turner at like 4%, 5% owned at most. Um, there's something a right. little bit intriguing about that, but I don't think that I don't think it's a, an especially great play. I think Jalen Smith or Turner would be fine for me. But um, you look at Jalen Smith, I mean, he's incredibly productive per minute. Uh, just just not quite getting all the minutes that, that you'd hope for. Uh, but he's, you know, he's fine. I just feel like everybody's fine for me, but nobody I, I need to prioritize here. And again, it doesn't mean these guys won't show up in my lineups later in the day. It's just as of right now, it's sort of a, it's sort of a pass for me. All right. Uh, what do we have next? We have New York, your, your Knicks and, and, and Milwaukee. What do you, what do you got here for the Knicks? I mean, Giannis is 12 one now, and it's hard not to say that that's not completely a fair price. The guy's averaging 36 points and 13 rebounds so far this season. He's averaging 65 fantasy points, um, including a, a massive blowout, which he would have gotten to like 75 in that one too. Uh, he's going to fight Luca for the MVP this year. I think it's going to come down to them too. And all of this, I mean, for me, I, I'll ask you what you got, but I, but I, I do think that the one guy who I who I do have as a have is, have some interest in is Julius Randle, and I wouldn't mind taking a, another shot on Brunson F, off of the the massive performance. But he was so efficient in that game. He also had 13 assists, and it was Charlotte, not not the same as Milwaukee exactly. And he's not he's not a great like he's not, he's not a high volume three point shooter. So probably end up doing nothing here. But I think that my favorite plays would be one of uh, either Randle or Brunson if I had to pick anybody from this game. Um, yeah, so Giannis is I mean, obviously the best play, if that makes any sense, uh, on the slate, but at 12K, it, it really strains, it really strains your lineup construction. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how good all this Portland value looks a little later, you know, and how all this other Orlando value looks a little later, but 
I mean, you certainly can play him, but there's so many guys that can that in the mid range that can put up scores today that you really have to be. I mean, if you play Giannis, you're really going to have to not only get a ceiling from him, but you're going to have to be perfect with your other values. It's um, it's tough. Um, yep. On the Knicks side, uh, I'll just these are just two total kind of hunch plays. That's all I really have because I don't really have too much as far as projections go. Um, it always seems that Mitch Robinson has a good game against Milwaukee. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know how he's going to project or whatever it is, but um, but uh, I would I will take a shot with him. And the other guy again, uh, a guy who also probably carry you know. If this game blows out, they might give him some more run. I'll go. I'll go back to Cam Reddish again at thirty eight hundred. Just this again, just a total, total random, random mm-hmm. bench guy that 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 they, they picked. I had to had to pick him up for a reason, you know. So so last year, so he's another guy just to win a million dollars or however you call it. Yeah, um, lottery guy. Yeah, so, but that's pretty. That's pretty much it. Yeah, let, let me revisit that. That that it's an interesting thing with the Mitch Robinson. I actually think that's not a bad idea, but I. Every time I think about playing Mitch Robinson, I kind of just want to play Hartenstein instead. <laughs> it's uh, it's just I, um, I I just feel like you know, and also like he'll get the blowout run. Should there be a blowout, I think he's got some some upside. But I I, I don't think this is one to prioritize. I do think that Randall is going to make people pay at four, at seventy nine hundred enough times in the season where this is actually decent. I mean, I know it doesn't seem like a, it's obviously not a good like one on one matchup if you look at it. It's not going to be him guarding Giannis necessarily, but like Giannis will be on him some of the time. That's not a great a great matchup, but. I just, I just am going to be intrigued at Randall as long as they keep him in that 8K range because we know that there's plenty of 50s and 60s that guy can get if he gets it going. But shot the ball terribly in the last game. Uh, definitely has a ceiling. That's really all I got for this one. All right. We have, sadly, I don't even want to call them my Lakers anymore. This is not, this is not my, favorite, my favorite thing to look at here. Um, uh, you know, I'll tell you what. You can't, you can't blame Russell Westbrook for losing by 25 the other night in Denver. Uh, he, he didn't play. So finally, he doesn't get he doesn't get the blame for a game. You have a, a, a you know a questionable on Anthony Davis, which is a, obviously a huge piece of news. Uh, I think obviously if Anthony Davis is out, LeBron is an awesome play. Westbrook's actually at a price where if Anthony Davis is out, no one's going to play him even at sixty four hundred. I, I would consider Westbrook if Anthony Davis was out. Um, everybody else is is sort of meh for me. Um, I think LeBron LeBron still is is in play even if Davis does play. I watched Davis get punked by Cat a number of times so far, in, you know, since he's been a Laker. And I, I, I don't know. I mean, 9,400, he had put up a big game the other night. If Davis do, is, is a go, I certainly think you could do worse. But I don't think that that's, that's something I really want to focus on. And then it's really hard on this Minnesota team who's been really bad so far this season. All I can keep saying is that the guy who I'm going to always make sure no matter what, I like – if I'm playing multiple lineups, I will always have 10% of Anthony Edwards as long as he's below 9K because he doesn't like just get there. When he gets there, he, he you're getting a lot of 30s out of him. But when he gets there, he's putting up 60s and 55s and things like that. Like he put a 56 the other night. I, I think he's the only guy who I really have interest in because of all the bodies there. But um, that's that's pretty much all I have there. Yeah, so I have to, I have to apologize. Um I, I when I was talking about playing in bead and worrying about the Anthony Davis news, I thought that the Laker game was was in LA, so I thought it'd be later. It actually is eight o'clock, so you'll Benny Luck have have whatever you need from the Lakers within a reasonable reasonable period of time. Um, I, I I kind of uh, I'm kind of into the idea that you kind of floated a few a few days ago I, I, that maybe Russ, Westbrook doesn't play another game for the Lakers. Um, but well, I, I, you I think he idea. will, especially after they get sm- they got smashed. But I don't know if it'll be tonight. Sorry. Yeah, I, 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 my, my, I, I kind of like the idea that he just doesn't play anymore and gets shipped to Miami, like you said, or something mm-hmm. like that. But anyway, um, they can, they can really get tooled on in this game. I mean, especially if Anthony Davis isn't playing. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you should be prepared somewhat for what to do if Anthony Davis is out. Um. I mean, you, you'll you'll see what to do probably based on projections of what the, the starting lineup is. But I'm looking at poss- what 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 happens if he's out. Like who plays? Like Juan Toscano Anderson, D- Damian or Damian Jones. I mean, I don't know what they do. Um, no, if 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 Anthony Davis is out, I don't. I mean, they'll probably will force another big in. So I think that the Toscano Anderson, but I think that is is is, is possible. 
I think that you might see Damian Jones even start in a matchup like this. If they, yeah, I think I think that would probably be what they did, what they do. But my guess is Davis. I mean, the, the Minnesota has two centers. Yeah, I mean, two bigs on the court all the time. They can't play LeBron at the five in this matchup. Uh, even going and it won't work going right. small either because like it, it, they'll just get completely smashed on the boards. They have they'll have no chance at all to compete in this game if they don't put a big out there, in my opinion. Um, and it's going to have to be and really the only other bigs that you know. The only other big they have Wenyan Gabriel and 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 uh, and Damian Jones, but that's that that's only if Anthony Davis doesn't play, obviously. And if Damian Jones starts and they, and and he's not playing, I think Damian Jones is is the you know a guy you're going to absolutely want to force in. And, or Gabriel. And and, and for, for, well, I'll get back to the Lakers in a second. But from the Minnesota side again, I just. This just I'm just gazing at this. It just looks it looks as though cat's too cheap at eighty eight hundred. Um if I had to pick between all these Minnesotas. Maybe I'm just biased because I see the eight in front of his name that I don't think I've ever seen before. I mean not in like a long time at least. But uh hasn't paid it off yet this year though. No, I know that. That's the thing. I mean they're just I mean they're good. You know, they have they're pretty freaking deep, you know. So yeah, uh, deep well, deep in the starters. You know they're know good, I mean? they're good in theory anyway. <laughs> right, that's true. Yeah. Um but um from the Lakers, I'll give a basketball take if you can figure this out. So, I mean, remember, we've talked about Rudy Gobert and Rudy Gobert defense like a while. And basically, the, the idea is that Rudy Gobert kind of as a defender is, I don't want to say a fraud, but he's kind of like, kind of like overrated somewhat. I mean, he's really good at like, like leaving his man to get block shots. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, the, exactly the greatest, like, like on ball defender. Right. So, so if you can find out, and, and one thing that LeBron is really good, I mean, probably the best in the history of basketball at is, is driving and finding guys for wide open threes. Um, and if you could, if you could know who the Lakers like best three point shooter is, uh, that's going to be on the court. Um, it's possible that you, you want to win like a million dollars or whatever it is. And, and you think that maybe you could get that situation where he's coming off of he's, he's driving and kicking when, when, when Gobert leaves his people, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know who that's going to be like Re- Austin Reeves, Kendrick Nunn. I mean, I don't know who's going to be out there shooting threes, but, but, that whoever that is is going to get some good looks. So that's a man, stupid basketball take, but it's just something I figured I'd bring up. Mm-hmm. But, but overall, I mean, to be pure, if Anthony Davis is out, LeBron is. I think you have to play him. I mean, I really do. Um, for he he's certainly the only way the Lakers will stay close. I mean, to be, say the least. And he's gonna, you know what I mean? Just on even if it, even if you only get three and a half, three quarters. I mean, you know what I mean? Like there's nobody else. Mm-hmm. No Davis that's going to do anything. So, and I'm obviously presuming Westbrook is out, right? So, so if it's, yeah, if I it's think Davis, I think Westbrook plays for what it's worth. Just oh, well, then it could be a little different. Okay? Yeah, but 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 if James if LeBron is all by himself out there, it's kind of a tough thing, regardless of blowout risk. Yep. Um. Yeah, yeah, and, and I and, and I, I hear you with that. With that, the only thing I would add about LeBron is he has he hasn't driven the ball at all this year. He doesn't attack the basket anymore. Okay. Um, okay. all he does is stand out and shoot three pointers and, and, and pass out of the high oh. post. He still gets his assists, but he, he stopped driving. Okay. Look at his, his free throw numbers. I mean, he's averaging what five, four or five free, free throws a game. This is a guy who's usually in the 10. Instead, he's shooting he's getting, eight, getting, getting older. Doesn't want the contact. Exactly. And, and, and if you, but again, so I, look, if Anthony Davis is out, I I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up with Westbrook in some lineups. Um, I'll just say that I'm almost <laughs> positive. I will. I, I just can't see how uh, they need another creator. And it, it's just, he's the only other well, guy. Well, he well, plays hard attacks. Well, what's that? Well, even better. Like you said, I mean, if, if you know that, the, the, that if Westbrook is playing, I mean, he's certainly going to attack the rim. So yep. he's attacking the rim. I mean, same concept. I mean, who, who's he'll find the guys to shoot the threes also, you know? Yep. So uh, whoever that's going to be, if you, if you think none's going to get in there, you think Reeves is going to get in there. I don't know. I think those guys could be interesting players. The problem is you have a team that's shooting the worst. They're the worst shooting team in the NBA right now from three at 24%. So they just have to make them. But, but again, those numbers are going to come back to some sort of a meet, even if it's 33%, which is a bad number, but that they'll, they'll at least they'll, they'll, it'll even out at some point. So I hear you with that. I just can't find a three point shooter. Lonnie Walker, yeah. if Davis is out is maybe in play, but is a little bit higher price than you usually want to pay for him. It's a little weird. I'm much more interested in this next game for fantasy, even though it doesn't look great on the surface. And, it's 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 kind of interesting to me that they're they're sort of assuming Levine is going to be out for the for the injury management, and that's possible. Um, this is probably a game where he he does sit. If if Levine plays, I'm very interested in Levine. And if he doesn't play, why aren't all these guys projecting better? Like I feel like I mean this is an incredible matchup. You have Demar going back to to San Antonio. 
Um, not that that even, not, not, you don't even need a narrative. Just D DeMar goes nuts and so does Vooch when, when there's no Levine on the court. So I would say one of DeMar or Vooch, if there's no Levine, are going to be priority plays for me. And this is a good pace matchup with a team that can't defend. So I, I will actually I will actually say that I, I'm going to be heavy on those guys. I also want to include with those guys that you get some value. You take a shot on Kobe White or Alex Caruso. Io Desunmu, uh, everybody always, oh, he looks like it's too much for him. He doesn't do all these things. He puts up fantasy points. And and all of these guys, so I, I actually think the Chicago, this Chicago-San Antonio game could end up being – the the other game one of the other games to target on this slate the problem is we with san antonio we just don't know ever what to expect they moved josh richardson's price up to 5400 and to be honest with you that's probably even reasonable we they're just so inconsistent with their rotations uh i mean with, with the sellout with everybody out they don't have any other usage guys so i i, I like i mean I, I would consider richardson again uh, i'll be very very high on, on the guy who's going to project incredibly well is is sohan um hasn't really put up a game that makes him worthwhile yet but i i'm open to it trey jones uh i don't know yet who i want to play from their side but i i, I think that, that maybe the answer is as simple as we we just we go for keldon johnson or or podal but i would say just the chicago and uh san antonio game in general is is going to be one that i try to target for a stack assuming that levine is out that's that's all i can say right now yeah, I don't quite get either why the Chicago guys are not looking as as good on the projection sheet. I mean, I'm I'm looking at these guys. I, I it's so funny when, when you when you do it from my perspective here. What I literally thought when I first was you know looking at the rankings, or whatever I thought that for whatever reason the models just didn't pick up the whole game, the Chicago side. I mean, I really I was like so I was I was shocked that these guys were not projecting well. As a matter of fact, I mean, I'm seeing Demar Derozan showing early ownership of 4%, mm -hmm. like for example, and, and I'm seeing Vooch as early ownership of 4%, same thing. And, and these guys projecting like 20th and 24th best values. I mean, all I can say is I hope it stays that way. I hope it stays that way. You know, right. I, uh, you know, I, I, this is a, I'll, I'll try it. Um, and on the San and on the San Antonio side, I, I think that those guys are all still in play. I mean, like Sohan, like you said, is going to project to be the best, but, but, but Trey, I, I'll go back to Trey Jones and Josh Richardson and, yep. and, and, and Poto and, and, and all these guys with Nova cell and even Keldon Johnson, 7,200, you feel like you shouldn't play him, but, 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 but why not? You know what I mean? Like uh, right. we have no players, you know? So, so, so someone's got to take these shots. Um, yep. Someone's going to get these rebounds. So, uh, with with listen, I mean, I think Orlando is going to get a, a ton of ton of ownership. I think Portland's going to get a ton of ownership, uh, and I think I think this game could be. I, I think you know I think these ownership projections are accurate in the end. I think that I think that nobody will play this game, uh, I agree. and I think that there's a good opportunity to take advantage of it. Yeah, I, I, I think people will will end up on the Spurs, um, right. but I don't think they're right. going to end up on Chicago, right. and and you're going to have right. a pretty. A pretty advantageous matchup against a team that, that I don't trust defensively in Chicago at all. So both both teams don't play defense and it should be a good pace game. I, I, I don't like the overs early in the season in general, but I, I, I like I like this over quite a bit. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Utah, Denver. Uh, Sheets, why don't you start this one off? And what do, what do you what are you looking at here? Because nobody looking great on the Utah side for me. Yeah, I don't have uh, anything from this game, honestly, with the exception of, you know, you have to actually you have to talk about Jokic, right? So. Uh, he's 11k, which is um, it's very reasonable actually for him. I mean, it's it's 11k is not the same as 12k, uh, and, and and I think that I can see why Giannis would project at 10% because he's 12k, but to Jokic projecting at 10% or less, uh, he's only 11k, uh, and, and he's got, I think that's safe. I think he's got the same ceiling as Giannis. I really do. Um, mm -hmm. so if you're going to try to struggle and get Giannis in, I, I would probably encourage you to, to play Jokic instead. Mm -hmm. Now Jokic is projecting five points less than medium projection, but and that is what it is. But I mean, who, who, who on earth is going to, is going to guard him in this game? You know what I mean? Um, totally. you, you're going to get either, and, but you know, but what happened is remember for, we said that in the first game in the season and Utah waxed them. They just beat the hell out of them. Right. Yeah. Um, so you know what? Even more to the point, I think Jokic is probably a freaking smash in the spot. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. And and even oh my god, 
I was going to say maybe they'd have to throw Walter Kessler, but even he's questionable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think that, I think that Jokic goes off in this game. Uh, and, and he would be, he would be my, I prefer him as a spend up over Giannis. I think there's equal blowout risk in both games. Uh, actually, that's not true. I think Milwaukee's the more blowout risk in that game than the Denver game. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think I like Jokic a lot here in the spot. I'm not really getting too much of anything else though. Um, Mm -hmm. So no marking at 71 in this occasion. So me, it's just basically Jokic or nothing. I think I might play him. Yeah. I, I, I love the Jokic idea. Um, again, if we can afford him, I think that he, he would be my preferred spend up unless AD is out and then it would be LeBron. Um, I love Jokic here tonight. I do. I, I my prediction for this game is that Denver re returns the favor and wins by 25. <laughs> um, yep. I think they beat him yep. easily. Yep. I think Michael Porter plays yep. <laughs> even though he's questionable. And uh, that's really all I, all I, that's all I got to say about that, I guess, is what they, what they say, because I, I, all the prices are, I mean, look, they're making it tough on us now sheets that they, they are not making it easy with the pricing again. We're not going to be able to take shots on. They gave us a break for the first week. I told you, know, you know? what it is. Yeah. And, and then all of a sudden everything just drastically changes. So, so, so kudos to them because it does make it harder, which will give us edge in, in the long run. And again, we're going to get value to open up. And when that does, I do think that Jokic, even in three quarters is going to put up 60 fantasy. I really think he's going to have a big game tonight. Um, either that, or we're going to see a, a Jamal Murray, you know, coming out of nowhere at some point. I just don't know. It, it feels really, really hard to make that play yet, but there's going to be that Jamal Murray 50 fantasy point game, probably 40 real life points coming up pretty soon. I just can't believe that he's going to stay down this long. All right. Um, and, 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 and all these games are, you know, I'm going to, we're going to talk a lot about the last game because that's going to be one I want to get involved in, but this, I guess they're, they start at the same time. So actually, yeah, it is the next one. So, so uh, the, sorry, it is the last one because new Orleans at, at, at Phoenix here um, we have, we have everybody questionable. It's really hard to know what to do with these guys questionable. Uh, what I would say is if Zion is available to go at 8,700, it's, it's questioning. I'm questioning how much they're really going to let him go, but they played him 30 minutes in the games that he's played. He hasn't really put up that monster game. If something like happened, like where McCollum was out and he was in, I would, I would definitely go for Zion here. Um, if, if everybody's playing, uh, probably a pass for me. And if those guys, if McCollum and Zion are out, I will be more than happy to play Valanchunas and I will be more than happy to play uh, Trey Murphy, who's playing a ton of minutes with these guys gone, but I, I don't think that it's like a, a great play against Phoenix here. And, and you got Herb Jones and Alvarado also questionable. So this is, this is a really big spot because you're going to have all, if all these guys are out, I mean, guys like Devonte Graham are going to start showing up. Um, and I think that's, if, if all four of those guys are out along with Ingram, who we already know is out, you're going to have to want to do something here because they just, that's, that's five key pieces and everybody else is pretty cheap outside of Alan Tunis. So I, I, I just, I guess I just have new Orleans with a big question mark as a priority. Um, but it's really depends on who plays and, and I don't have a great feel for what they're going to do. Uh, my, my instinct would be that they would sit Zion again, because I don't think they want to risk anything with that, but they also, at some point, this guy's got to play basketball. So uh, I don't know, man, do you have, do you have anything else on the, on the, on that side? Because I, I think this is a game that on the other side, it's just, it's pretty simple. Like you, you, you play either Aiton, Paul, or the seemingly overpriced Booker. But I think all of those guys are completely legitimate plays against the New Orleans team that you can, uh, you can really run against. So I, I'm sort of, I'm sort of up in the air because I feel like this could be a really good game, but I need some people to be out. Yeah, this game is ridiculous um, on the New Orleans <laughs> side. I mean, to see all this, all these Q tags. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just so. It's so stupid to 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 analyze it this this early, you know. Um, yeah, I agree. And it's it's even too stupid to analyze it at lock. I mean, you gotta just you got you gotta wait till nine o'clock. You know what I mean? You just have to. Um, the the good news is you're probably gonna end up waiting anyway, because you have to, you're gonna have to make sure that you're you know the Portland guys are are, are what you think they're gonna be. Um, so if you're gonna wait anyway, there's I I really don't think it's the slightest. I have no interest in sweating this game right now, you know, right. uh, because like you said, I mean, if Zion and CJ McCollum are both in, probably I don't want to play any of it, honestly. Um, actually, but then again, if they're in, then the game's more competitive and you, then you're more likely to play Phoenix guys too. So yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's certainly worth considering. And if all of them are out, then you get 40 minutes of Trey Murphy. You know what I mean? Like, so it, it's, um, 
you, you just you just you just have to wait on this. Yep, and and again, it's just it's 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 so many guys who are questionable. It's like it is impossible to try and get through. By the end of the day, we may be talking about Garrett Temple and Willie Hernan Gomez. You know what I mean? Like it's it's just you have no idea if they say if they sit if they're literally if they could literally miss six of their guys in this game, and that's 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 a legit possibility. But uh, I think we have I think we have the main game here um, and the final one, and that's that's why I think it is it is good to backload. Uh, I will be more than happy to play Shengun, who I think is going to play tonight. And that would be my priority here. Uh, I think that he is a, uh, an awesome play with the other bigs out. Uh, you also have <clears throat> Kevin Porter Jr., who I think will play. And I don't mind even if you want to take the Jalen Green, Jabari Smith, Kevin Porter shots. I, I have no problem with any of those guys. But my my main focus here is going to be Shengun, and I will be very, very heavily invested in, in him on the Houston side. On the Portland side, you you got a lot of question marks here. What they're going to do with their their lineup with no uh, with 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 no Dame. So Anthony Simons is, I think, like being way under projected. I think he should be an absolute priority in every format. I think he's. I think you're going to look at like I honestly think he like if he gets just forty. I think you're lucky. You're you're okay to fade to just forty. But I think like forty is like I don't want to say his floor, but like his realistic floor. I think Nurkic is a phenomenal play here. Uh, I think that uh, the, the main ones, though, who are going to show up are going to be Keon Johnson and, and Shaden Sharp. Shaden Sharp, this is the most interesting guy because he, this is a guy who, you know, was ahead of every one of these guys who were in this incredible draft that we've had so far. All, everybody's been really, really good from this draft. Shaden Sharp was the number one player, you know, halfway through his until he had the, you know, the some some off the court issues. I'm always interested in the off the court issues, guys, because it doesn't matter once they're actually on the court. Um, so Shaden Sharp has done nothing but look really, really good in limited minutes. That'll, that'll all change with no Lillard. You also have, uh, you know, Gary Payton, the third is questionable tonight and, uh, or Gary Payton, the, uh, the second, sorry, I should say, uh, is questionable. Watford may end up coming back tonight. So that could end up mucking things up a little bit, but I, I really feel like you just want to target this game. This is, this is my favorite game along with Chicago, San Antonio, and potentially, potentially that, that Orlando Charlotte game. But uh, Simons being the priority, Nurkic being the, I don't even want to say low owned. I don't know. I don't think he's going to be that low owned. Um, but I, I, I really want to get heavily invested in this game and, and then just hope things break my way and I can always adjust along the way later in the evening. But I, I, I'm into this one quite a bit. So I'm a very big fan of the Shengun on one side with potentially one of Kevin Porter Jr. and, and Jalen Green um, or Jabari Smith and uh, Nurkic and Simons. It's just you're you're taking away a forty percent usage. I mean, Dame has the highest usage of any player in the NBA this season, I believe. It's right there with Luca. Um, so I I would be very very happy to uh, to just overweight the hell out of this game and uh, and then you know adjust along the way as as the night goes on. And I'm I'm not going anywhere tonight, so that's what I'm going to do. I just think it's really weird that Shane Sharp is going to be as popular as he is. I, I love him, by the way, but he's going to be. I mean, you might you might see a guy who's like fifty percent owned who may only play twenty minutes. And he also may play 40 minutes and you might have no choice but to play him the same. And, and, and the same is not true with Keon Johnson. It's a little different with Keon Johnson because he's three K, but it's, I mean, this is a guy who hasn't, you know what he played eight minutes in, in a game and he played 10 minutes in a game this season. And now we're going to, we're going to project him as, you know, what six is six X thing is his, his three K price tag. So I, I have a lot of interest in these guys, but it, it feels a little fishy to just immediately assume those guys. I think I'd rather, prioritize the Simons Nurkic and one of those guys uh, is my initial thought. I, I would add in a couple um, justice Winslow. I would add in justice Winslow at 3,900 and I would add in Josh Hart at 6,600. Mm. Um, I think all these, I mean, you already played 57 minutes a game or whatever, Josh Hart. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think people really realize like how much just usage Lillard eats up you know and, and when he's out I mean this is I mean this is all all these guys get bumps now now again you could you could get cute and say well you know uh is Josh Hart really going to get the type of usage that 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 Lillard had or is Nurkic really like Nurkic isn't going to bring the ball up the court what is that it just all flows to everybody else in the court it just it just, it just does Absolutely. it's not like Keon Johnson gonna say okay I'm gonna beat out Damian Lillard you know, what I mean? it just doesn't it just doesn't work that way. You know, like, uh, right. it's, and it's not as though Shaden Sharp is going to say, "Okay, I'm 
more likely he tried it's, it's more likely if anybody tries to do that it would be simons but simons is just shooter you know what i mean like he's not gonna he's not gonna be the point guard he's not oh, he, gonna, like, I, do- I don't know about that i mean he was if you look at his game log from the end of last season everything was yeah. 50s and 60s and now and he's getting a million okay. assists um that he oh, will okay. be that guy without dame in my opinion um unless it's nerf okay but, yeah sorry that's just just run that in there but it is kind of weird because then, then I'm using both of my center spots in the last game. And that feels a little bit odd because we like some centers that we talked about earlier. I, Cause I really like Shangun assuming that he plays tonight. I mean, he, he, we haven't even seen him play minutes yet and, and he's still averaging 30 fantasy points a game and he's playing 20. He hasn't played more than 27 minutes. You you would think that if he's, if he's able to, to come back, which he's, he's probable for tonight, and it's been an illness. So there's no physical injury there. I feel like Shangun is like, I mean, I don't even know how not to play him here. And uh, I like I like the idea of playing them both. It always worries me to play two centers against each other, foul trouble and whatnot. But this is this seems like the game you want to you want to get into um, and you want to have a lot of pieces of. So I'm very, very high on this game in general, which is kind of nice that it's the last game because it's not nice if you if you want to go have a nice Friday night. But I will be at home with the fam for, for Friday night with my kid and and, and our family. So I, I'll be able to check every 20 minutes and uh, make sure see who's in and who's out and who's starting and whatnot. But uh I do think you want to highlight the first, like you said, at the very top, um, the first game and the last game. And I would mix in the Chicago San Antonio in between. And that's sort of where, where my ownership's going to go tonight. Um, All right. I will be there to join you. I will be there to join you uh, awesome. for live, uh, later. Great. And uh, I will see you then. Great. All right. Good luck to everybody. And let's make some money. All right. Later.